So I've got my ecto goggles, my PKE meter, and my ghost trap, but I feel like I'm missing something. Oh yeah, the proton pack! Let's take a look at this! So here is the deluxe replica quality proton pack put out by Spirit Halloween. I am Halloween. This is Ghostbusters Classic, which I guess is put on there for anyone who doesn't really know the difference between the newer proton pack and the original one. So, as you'd expect from a proton pack, this has some light up and sound features, and also the straps on it are adjustable. It's been quite difficult in the past to get a replica proton pack at a rather decent price point. So it's pretty nice that you now have the option of the Spirit one for 70 bucks. My other Ghostbusters props are from the Maddie Collector line, but they never put out a full proton pack, just the Neutrona wand on its own. So let's see how much busting you get for your buck with this proton pack. So straight out of the box, we have two little pieces of bubble wrap on it, which I guess protected it to the max. All right, stupid little sniffs about the packaging aside, this thing does look pretty good for 70 bucks. One thing that looks like it might be a little annoying with this pack is the um, stiffness of the cord connecting the Neutrona wand to the rest of the pack. I've heard some complaints about this Proton Pack's color, the complaints mostly being that it's a little overly brown and not dark black enough, but I don't know, if I compare it with my PK meter, it's kind of similar, and that seems okay to me. Now, yeah, I definitely know it's not perfect, but you're not going to get that for 70 bucks. I've seen some people take into painting up these proton packs and modifying them a bit to make them look a little more screen accurate, and that's a really good option if you want something much cheaper than a few thousand dollar proton pack. But yeah, as I mentioned, the thing kind of annoying me straight out of the package here is just kind of how stiff this cord is. One other nitpick I guess I'd have is the placement of the speaker being so blatant right where the red lights would be going. I just feel like there probably could have been another spot on the pack to make it stand out a little less. There isn't a lot of painting going on with this proton pack, but we've got a lot of decals on here to fill out things like the danger and warning labels. Which is good because now I know to use only hydraulic pumps that have O-ring type and to grease the retention splines. And now I know what motivates the proton pack. <laughs> I really love that they have the chippered minimatic valve detail on here, both on the pack and on the wand. Now you can see some of the spots where they sprayed the silver on this thing kind of got a little overrun. There should be a pole running down from this part, which I don't remember the name of and probably has some purpose, but I don't know. I'm sorry, I guess I'm not a true fan. It's called the Ion Arm. One thing I do know is that this part of the Proton Pack is called the Cyclotron, which is something I didn't know when I covered the real Ghostbusters episode Big Trouble and Little Slimer when they threw him in that giant chamber called the Cyclotron. It kind of even makes less sense knowing that. So yeah, some details are missing, but we got a lot of the major things here, like the cords running across it and the ribbon cable over here. Again, some things like this ribbon cable aren't really perfect, but I mean, it's not that bad for a $70 pack. Seriously, the thing that's annoying me the most so far is this. Like, look at how annoying this cord can be while you're trying to just connect the Neutrona wand to the pack, and then you kind of got it doing a little loopy thing here, which is not really ideal. Maybe that's why they have the wand put on upside down on the box. And on the actual Proton Pack prop, the wand kind of slides in and off on grooves, which is a lot nicer than it pegging in like it does on this. Now the pack doesn't look very good from this angle. The actual Proton Pack prop's supposed to be like on an Alice frame and stuff, but of course you're not going to see all just this black felt when you're wearing it, so it doesn't matter that much. However, you will see the straps when you're wearing it, and these are rather dinky. I think they could have given us some straps that looked a little bit more like the actual Proton Pack straps. Or at least just 
thicker straps that look like they would come on a more decent backpack than this. There's a little Velcro flap on this side, which when you open, you'll reveal the battery pack. So pop in three double A's and you're good to go. So to turn the battery function on on the Spirit Pack, you've got a simple on-off switch. That's obviously not exactly how it should go, but um, let's give its battery functions a go. So it's pretty cool. It's lighting up in most of the spots it should with the cyclotron and the blue light here and of course it flashing from the wand. But all you have with lights and sound with this proton pack is while it's shooting. There's no start up or cool down after you're done firing which is kind of something I really wish was on here. Those sounds and like the just idling light while it just flashes the different red lights on the cyclotron are something Thing I really wish were on here because it feels a little empty without it in a way. Now if you leave it going long enough there is a bit of a stop sound but it doesn't really sound right compared to how the actual proton pack does. It'd just be really nice if it wasn't just so abrupt on and off just instantly done. Now don't get me wrong, I think this pack looks absolutely awesome in firing the Proton Stream mode, but I don't think it should have added any more to the cost to just have an on switch which would activate, you know, just idle standard mode with the flashing lights and not really making any noise except maybe the when you turn it on, and then have another switch to activate the firing mode. So really to me, the lack of an idle mode is the biggest downfall of this particular pack. I mean, that and uh, the wand's a little small. So if you thought I wasn't going to suit up to try this pack out, I don't know if I'm quite ready to believe you. So when you're actually wearing the Proton Pack, here's why having the sliding off wand is so much better than this peg thing. It's not as hard to get off, but trying to get it back on quite annoying. Here, here's what it looks like when I'm standing here with my thrower. Man, I'm awesome, right? <laughs> Shut up. So yeah, just kind of looking at me from the front with this pack on with just these straps is, you know, one of the things that doesn't look nearly as nice about it. What I've heard is this pack is about 80% of a normal one, and I think the thrower is a little smaller than that. But I mean, overall, it doesn't look horribly undersized. I can say this thing looks really awesome in the dark, as long as you're shooting. Bye. The peg connector really is kind of an annoying issue with this, though, as I think you pretty much have to slide the pack off and peg it back on whenever you want to stick the wand back onto the pack. Also, it's quite easy to bump the on and off switch when you don't mean to. I know I keep complaining about the same thing, but the tension of this cord, you know, kind of makes it flop in front of the pack on mine at least, and it gives it so much tension on here, it'll easily pop the wand out sometimes. And then you'll bump the on and off switch and have it go off like you don't want to. But yeah, I do really like this pack, just, it has some issues. The Spirit Ghostbusters Proton Pack has a lot of pros and cons to it. When you look around at all the detailing on the pack, it looks pretty good and accurate in a lot of ways, but its color really isn't quite right, and it doesn't have as much of that cobbled together look as the actual Proton Pack does. Also, overall, its look is a bit flat compared to how the actual prop should look. Having now worn this pack out for a Halloween party, I can tell you the stiffness of the cord really is an issue, as once in a while it would pop the thrower off leading to it hitting the floor and also bumping the on button. I'd recommend changing how it connects with some metal brackets. And really this pack is a good base if you want to fix it up a bit for a cheaper proton pack. As it is, I'd still say it does its job fairly well for a budget pack. There just could have been a couple more features
figures that I don't think really should have bumped the cost up that much. Seven. It's nice they finally thought of a decent way to make a budget Proton pack, and I appreciate that even though there's quite a bit that's a bit cheap about its construction, with it mostly being a plastic shell that houses a few blinking lights and a soundboard, that they still really paid attention to a lot of the detailing that should be on a Proton pack. Seven. It's kind of weird that it's taken this long for a mass-marketed adult-sized Proton pack. It's not quite full to scale, but it's pretty close. But otherwise, weirdness doesn't really apply here. Three. The box is, uh, really adequate, I guess. Besides them putting the blaster upside down when it's connected to the pack. Five. And the MMZ overall is seven! If the electronics had a non-firing mode and the wand didn't have that pop-off issue, I'd gone a bit higher and higher. But I'm still pretty happy with it given its price point. Yeah, just uh, screw that. <clears throat> anyway. And again, this darn cord's annoying. <laughs>